the new Urban Decay Hydromatic. Hydromatic. What's up guys, welcome back. So today we are doing a foundation wear test. What? We haven't done a foundation wear test in ages on my channel. There was a time on my channel where we did it all the time, but there hasn't been a really exciting release in a while. And today we do have a very exciting release. This is the new Urban Decay Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator, medium coverage, up to 24 hour wear. And this is the look that I was able to achieve today, but we are going to be doing a full day wear test. You guys are about to see me barefaced. We're going to put all of this on, including playing with the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette again, because I don't know if you guys know this, but I had to take that video down for other reasons and uh, not having to do it with the actual palette. And it broke my heart because I loved the look that I got and I actually really love this palette. So it would give us a chance to play with that again. And I'm going to go through the claims on this, the price, the shade range, everything like that. And then I'm gonna do a full day wear test and give you guys my final thoughts at the end of the day. I'm not gonna be wearing it for 24 hours. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I have a baby. <laughs> I don't think anybody actually needs to wear foundation for 24 hours, but I'm gonna wear it for as long as possible. Anyway, I'm gonna move y'all in and we'll get to putting some makeup on my face. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I'm not sure for the sake of the demo whether a sponge or a brush is gonna be better, so I have both. I'm still using this Eco Tools. What do they call this? The Bio Blender? And she is so squishy. <laughs> I like can't put enough emphasis on how satisfyingly squishy the sponge is. If you're into a really soft sponge, this is your girl. So this is what the bottle looks like. It's pretty cute. And I, of course, was excited about this as soon as I saw it on like what, trend mood? Because it says Hydromaniac. I was like, oh, it's gonna be so hydrated. It's gonna be so moisturizing. But I was also concerned, right, that that meant it was going to be super duper dewy and like kind of obnoxious to wear because your hair sticks to your face kind of thing. Well, as it turns out, and I'm mixing just a little bit of my debronzy drops, as it turns out, it's not super duper dewy. Hey, I think that's a pretty good match. Let's try the sponge here. See if that'll spread it out nicely. But this did surprise me. I'm sorry, I had to relocate my train of thought there. It did surprise me because it has a dry down on its own. I think it's got a good bit, you know, of silicones and stuff in it. Trimethicone, uh, phenyl trimethicone is the second ingredient after water. So that is the nice silicone dry down that it has. But after that, you just get into like glycerin and stuff. And that's what gives it that really nice dewy finish but it does have kind of like a Habsies, a Habsies finish, you know? It has like enough dewiness that it's pretty and it looks hydrated, but it, and I'm gonna put a little bit more on here, it is not that like ferociously dewy situation where you feel like you can't powder it or something. Custom mixing this each time is probably going to be my downfall. Like I think that that was a little bit too deep. But yeah, Urban Decay, I don't know. A lot of the criticism that I've heard of Urban Decay recently is just that a lot of their stuff is kind of like unexciting. I would beg to differ the new Naked Wild West palette while being a little bit far-fetched in terms of being a naked palette. I am excited about that colorway, color story. I hope that they send it to me and if you guys are interested in it, even if they don't send it to me, let me know and I'll just buy it because I've like never bought a naked palette before. <laughs> be a fun time to start. It's just really, really cool. Like it does have all of the like neutral shades in it that you <laughs> would expect from a naked palette, but it also has like these turquoises and stuff in it. It is, it is different. It is new and different as far as what is living in my brain of like recent releases and stuff. It doesn't look like anything that I have. So we have a la <laughs> Lovely medium coverage situation happening here. Maybe we'll turn this light down even more. I'm becoming Raw Beauty Christie in that sense where I'm just like, hey guys, you're gonna see how the sausage is made with the lighting and everything because I wanna show you how this works. So I don't think I'm gonna be powdering this today. I'm gonna try not to powder it. And I'm actually going to use a little bit more of it as like my concealer since it is <laughs> such a light shade. But uh, that is the gorgeous finish on it. And I'm not sure if it's like my skin necessarily that is like soaking up whatever emolliency that's in there or whether it just would do this on anybody, but 
even though it has that glycerin-y bouncy look to it, it doesn't stay really, really sticky, which is super nice. So yeah, let's see if we can kind of build this. And you'll see the real shade here. <laughs> Do the little bit white. But that's, you know, that's nice. It's nice to be able to manipulate the color, but I'm not sure that we're gonna be able to build that up to the level of coverage that I want in like a concealer. I just don't think that that's the purpose that this serves and that's fine. So I am going to grab my <laughs> broke as a joke here. Little Co says guy, it's gonna get all over my fingers. If I haven't said it already, my skin is freaking out right now. Okay, well there goes the other half of the cap. We have a pretty dire situation here. That's pretty gross. So it's like a bacteria factory because it's like open to the air. But the Kosa's concealer does have its own really nice dry down to it as well. So I think that they will go together pretty nicely. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Is that better? I like that better. Now you can see what the heck's going on. Mm. Yeah. So I think that if I'm not like trying to explain this in 15 different ways, I think that the Hydromaniac title of it kind of gives more of a description of the finish, like the way that it looks, than the way that it behaves because I thought that it was going to be really, really heavy. And it doesn't feel heavy at all. So I will now zoom through my cream, contour, and bronzer routine. decided what I want to do with my blush yet, but we're going to decide after I do my eyes. So if for whatever reason, I mean, this is not new, but if for whatever reason you are unfamiliar with the Stoned Vibes palette, it's really awesome. So we've got like four satiny mattes that work really well for like building your crease and everything. And then we've got all of these crazy like trichrome jewel tones that are super duper beautiful. So I'm just going to start in here and yes the skin on my eyes is a little bit dewy right now and so it's going to grab this product a little bit but i think that we can work through it before i discovered aether beauty this was my tippy top eyeshadow formula in the entire industry you know i always talk about how there is a spectrum right between super professional shadows that are very stiff and sticky and then there are the ones that are like so blendable they'll literally like blend away without you even really like working them that much and uh, an example of that to me is like melt cosmetics or uh, anastasia beverly hills i just find that those formulas are kind of frustrating because they don't stick at all and i like this because it's right in the middle it's like a beginner friendly formula just mixing some shades together getting a very basic little contour highlight situation going here, even though that's a pretty warm shade in my crease still. And I'm gonna go ahead and touch into one of these jewel tone situations. So where should we go? I think that I wanna go with like Bloodstone today. It's kind of a green shift taupe kind of color, or maybe the other way around, like a taupe shift green. Yeah, and the best thing to do with these is to layer them because it's like the particles stay a certain distance apart when you put the first layer on. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. And then when you put the next layer on, it fills in all the gaps in the glitter and gives you like the foiled effect. And I don't really know why. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. So yeah, it's like the base color of Bloodstone is very similar to the local color that I already had on with the matte and uh, it just has like a green shift. I think I wanna go Tiger's Eye. It's a little bit kind of like orangey pink. Yeah. Yeah, this palette is a glitter experimenter's <laughs> dream. You know, if you just like to be a little bit adventurous, but you also like to be pleasantly surprised because, you know, the formulas are easy to work with and stuff. This is a really, really nice formula. So I'm gonna go in with third eye. Do I wanna do third eye or hexed? We're gonna go with hexed. It's kind of this medium brown. And very gently 
build the crease a little bit there. But the formula is just effortless. That's why I like Urban Decay shadows so much. Now I did watch Hannah Louise Poston's review on the Naked Ultraviolet palette and it looked like those formulas were not the same because she was having a lot of trouble getting payoff from them and that's never an, an issue that I have had with an Urban Decay shadow. My first experience with an Urban Decay shadow was with the Born to Run palette, which it, I have since retired because it was uh, expired, but I use that at my wedding and everything. It is just, it is honestly a palette I would consider repurchasing. It's so huge and it has everything, it's awesome. So that's absolutely beautiful, <laughs> okay? Like I feel like I need to like change my outfit to go <laughs> with the level of sophistication on my eyes right now. Or the fanciness, I guess. Just going back in with that highlight shade. Mixing those a little bit. All right, what does that mean for my cheeks? You know what we haven't used in a while is the Tower 28 blushes and I am reminded of that because they just came out with a bunch of new ones and what did I do? I went on Sephora this morning and I ordered all of them. So look forward to a full swatch video of the entire Tower 28 collection, including both of the bronzers uh, coming up soon, but I'm going to pull that rosy shade. Magic Hour from Tower 28. I think this is going to be the one. It's just the right kind of, and you know, some people don't want to match their blush to their eyeshadow. I like to. It just looks better to my eye. I feel like this is a pretty darn good match for formula too. It's just pigmented enough. It's got its own little silicone dry down but it's also really nourished looking and dewy. I do like the level of pigmentation of a Tower 28 blush. Like it's not backing away from pigmentation, but it's also like not gonna run away on you. My hair, <laughs> my hair's got a freaking mind of its own this morning. My hair has finally started to thin around the edges because of like postpartum and everything. So <sighs> just, you know, it's always, it's always something. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna throw on my brows and an eyeliner and some mascara and uh, I guess some lips too. We'll come back and we'll put on one of the Tower 28 lips because I'm just feeling Tower 28 at the moment, but uh, I'll be right back. Honestly guys, like how I applied a taupe shift green and then orange on top of it and I still ended up with the same pink eye look that I always end up with, riddle me that, I have no idea. Everything turns pink on me and yes, I do like pink, but like that was not what I applied. And now we have like a pink sparkly eye look just like we always do. So I am going to go in with Happy Hour here, the pink er, and just do a little bit of local color right here on my cheeks, tip of the nose, get a little bit more, a little bit more blushy situation, yeah. So I was able to get my hands on, like I said, all of them, including the one that I wasn't able to buy before from the original collection, which I'm not really sure what it's called, but it's the orangey one. So we'll be able to try all of them. Now it is staying a little bit dewier on me right now because this room is really hot. <laughs> my upstairs is super duper hot and my downstairs is, is not. Definitely contributing to this, but also under these lights, everything gets really hot. Because everything is so pink, this just happened to be the one that I was able to locate the fastest. This is their Shine on Lip Jelly in Coconut, which is the pink persuasion, but I am going to use my khaki lip liner with it so it'll make it a little bit more neutral. Setting aside the fact that this did end up like every other freaking eye look I ever do, I still think it's really pretty. <laughs> There's a reason it's what I do all the time. I love this formula. It's not a liquid lip balm or minty or anything like that. It's just a really lightweight gloss, but I like it a lot still. Milky glasses. Especially when all you want is like a little water coloring of color, you know, you don't want it to steal the show. All right, I'm gonna move y'all back out and we're gonna talk about this here foundation. Alrighty, so comes in 12 shades. Am I counting that right? 12 shades and it's pretty expansive. I definitely think that they could have done more because there is a little bit more coverage to this than just a typical skin tint, but it's not bad in my opinion. 
and it retails for $29 and you get 1.1 ounces. I will say I got it in, like I said, the fairest shade 10 ultra fair neutral. I probably should have gone 20 fair neutral and uh, if that helps inform any of you guys as to which shade you would go for if your skin tone is similar or comparable to mine. What it is, a long wearing foundation infused with kombucha filtrate and marula oil. My skin loves marula oil. For 30% more hydrated skin, medium coverage, and a glowing finish. Medium coverage, radiant finish, liquid formula. The kombucha filtrate is an antioxidant rich ingredient that visibly brightens and purifies the skin for a more luminous look and marula oil is awesome. Hydrates, protects, and seals in moisture. Uh, free of phthalates, also vegan and cruelty free. Infused with nourishing ingredients, lightweight formula leaves the skin feeling super hydrated while minimizing imperfections like uneven skin tone and texture with a blurring effect. After applying, you'll notice a healthy glow and medium coverage that looks like real skin and wears for up to 24 hours. I put this on at about 8 a.m. So I'm gonna try and wear it for as long as I can today. So it says, in clinical results in a seven day consumer study with 281 participants, 85% said that skin looked glowy and fresh all day and 100% of users said they had improved skin hydration after 24 hours. So they are kind of promising like long-ish term results, like long-term results after wearing the foundation, improved skin, improved hydration from the actual foundation. And your girl really needs that, okay? I reordered my Acure moisturizer, the radically rejuvenating whipped night moisturizer that's supposed to be a dupe for the proteiny polypeptide balm from, or polypeptide cream or whatever from Drunk Elephant. And you guys, my skin and like my face and my neck laughed at it overnight. Like I woke up and it was a desert. I was like, all right, this is not, this is not it anymore. And I have been using the First Aid Beauty uh, Ultra Moisture whatever, but whatever the eucalyptus is in it irritates my, my like skinned up nose where everything is peeling from the cold weather. And so I'm trying a whole bunch of other stuff right now. All that to say, <laughs> my skin does need all the hydration it can get and it needs it during the day as well. So loving the promises here. And like I said, I have worn this before and when I was using it in, you know, not a super warm room and not under a bunch of lights, it didn't stay this dewy right on application. I felt like it, like my skin really drank it up a lot faster. So I'm anticipating that happening over the course of the day. We will see after however long I'm able to wear it today, whether we still have this bouncy dewy finish, whether it annoys me because it's sticky or anything, or whether it, you know, drinks it up and we do end up with kind of a different finish by the time I've worn it all day and whether it wears in or wears off. This is probably going to be something that wears in because it does mimic skin texture. Wearing off is usually when the texture of the makeup and your skin have such a different texture that it's super, super obvious when it breaks up or something and you get that with like more full coverage, uh, matte, dry down kind of products and I don't anticipate that happening with this. I really like, just to give my opinion on it after the days that I've worn it and putting it on today, I really, really like it. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the original like L'Oreal Lumi uh, foundation, except it's just a little bit thicker. And I think that's because of the glycerin and I just love that like bouncy, bouncy look. <laughs> and at first when I put it on like before, I didn't get that bouncy, bouncy look and I'm hoping that it wears, uh, maybe my skin was just a little bit more dehydrated then, but I'm hoping it keeps wearing like that today because I think that it's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, I have really high hopes for this. I don't like to go into reviews with expectations necessarily, but since I have had a little bit of experience with this and I do absolutely love how it looks and feels, plus $29, that's pretty darn good for a foundation, guys. If this becomes like your everyday foundation, if this is like your ideal finish, I definitely think that A, $29 is not a big thing to come out of pocket for. B, you get more than an ounce, ever so slightly more than an ounce, which is really, really cool. The expiration on this, it lasts a year, so that's great. You'll actually get a chance to use the whole bottle before it expires. And so far, as far as who this is for, I would say it is for the cream makeup lover because it's a self setting foundation in the sense that it's not, you know, giving me like this super gooey thing on my face and it doesn't need to be powdered, uh, but it also has like this really pretty, like better than skin kind of look to it. So those are a lot of expectations. Again, high hopes and I hope that it lives up to all of them. So yeah, guys, I'll do the close up here. Turn, turn my light down. That's what she looks like. Natural light. 
honestly so pretty. That is how she looks and I'm gonna wear it for the rest of my day. I will see you guys whenever that time comes. Hey guys, it's the end of my day. This feels so weird, I haven't done this in so long. It's the end of my day and it is 5.15, which means I've been wearing this for a little over nine hours now, right? Yeah. And I just took a clip that I will insert right now on my vlogging camera in natural light because everybody found that really valuable when I did that with Rare Beauty, just to get a different perspective so that it's not just underneath these lights and everything because it can often make things just look different than real life. But my main takeaway here, guys, is this is really beautiful and something about it is special. So I talked about when I was putting it on, I expected that my skin was gonna kind of soak up the marula oil and the moisture and everything that was in it. And it did a little bit, but it really lasted, that bouncy, dewy, like initial application thing, lasted for like the first four hours easily. And you can still see this really nice glowiness. Now we've lost blush. I've reached up and touched my face a lot. I'm leaning over my baby all the time. And so, you know, I don't often wear my hair down. And when I do, he grabs it. And so I'm constantly like pulling my own hair, like out of his hands and off of my face. And so I just ended up touching my face a ton. I also ate a chicken sandwich for lunch and it got like, you know, bread and mayonnaise all over this part of my face. But this had some serious stays power and not just like wear time but also just a beautiful texture a really really pretty texture and for $29 like I, I don't know it's just it's a very very special little product to me so let me show you up close here if I turn this light down it's like my white balance just adjusts anyway but that is what it looks like in this light and I hope that it's coming across. It obviously you can see my pores and everything, but I think it's in like this really pretty smoothed blurred way. Nothing is accentuated in a bad way. And you know, I'm a glasses wearer that can often really, really expose me when I take my glasses off. Like if there's gonna be a big texture difference between a foundation and my skin, that's where you'll see it. And I don't feel like it's selling me out at all. So yeah, I lowered it just a little bit, even for this part, so that maybe you could see a little bit more detail, but I just don't have any complaints here. This is a really gorgeous, unique texture of product, and I think it really comes down to the marula oil and the glycerin, and also the trimethicone. Like that combination to me, I don't know what proportions they're in in the actual formula, but in my experience, my limited experience with the performance of different ingredients, it's just like, you know, a silicone is gonna make it wear lightly and sort of give it more of its own dry down without powdering, where the oils and the waxes and things like that are going to give it flexibility on the skin without sort of drying up and particulating. And that glycerin is, you know, the ingredient that's typically in just about any setting spray. And that's what gives it that really nice long wearing, but also flexible appearance. Like the Hourglass Veil Setting Mist is like mostly glycerin and it does, it makes your makeup flex with your face and that keeps it from settling into lines, which is huge. So while I do still feel like this changed over the day as I wore it. Like not necessarily in an appearance way, but in the way that it feels because I am, I'm dry around my eyes and I'm dry kind of right around here where my retinol does most of its work. That part of my face I can still feel is drier than when I first put this on. So it basically like absorbed the skincare ingredients that were in this, but it doesn't look like that. You know, you didn't get any of that weird makeup breakup or anything. And I do still get that sometimes with a foundation, even if I don't powder it. It will just pull all the moisture out of a formula and only leave whatever the powder particles are. And I can get that crusty thing even without powdering. So it did not do that. It stayed really nice and dewy under my eyes, but we don't have any creasing or anything. It's just, it's special. And I think that in the conversation around Urban Decay, like we were talking about earlier in the video, a lot of people want to 
bag on them for putting out kind of unexciting releases, but I talked about that spectrum, right, of putting out something that's exciting, but is like not super user friendly because it's so different. And then the other end of the spectrum is like, oh, it's so uh, well-worn that it's like right within everybody's comfort zone, but it's not exciting enough for anybody to want it. And we kind of have to exist somewhere in the middle there to catch people's eye, but also make a product that is like, you know, versatile and works for a lot of people. And this, to me, kind of nails it. This has unique enough of a formula that I will definitely wear it again. It's very, very, very pretty. And uh, like I said, it is a foundation for people who love cream products because it's gonna make your skin look like skin and then you can just wear cream products on top of it, but it doesn't stay all slippy, glidey, oily. I think that this is just utterly lovely. And I wanna thank Urban Decay for sending this to me. Actually, I forgot to tell you guys the sorry tale. So it got sent to my old address because I did mail forwarding, but I didn't realize that doesn't do anything for like UPS. <laughs> And you know, a lot of my PR comes in like UPS or FedEx. And so it's like, I've had to go and update it in each individual company, but my lovely next door neighbors from my old house uh, forwarded this to me as well as an, a beautiful play mat that was sent to me from um, Good Molecules of Beautylish for Simon. And it's just so sweet. It's from Crate and Barrel. Anyway, I'll show it on the vlog, but regardless, I had they had to send all that stuff. They had to forward it all to me. So this took quite a journey. <laughs> <laughs> to get to me, but I'm so glad that it did. And uh, if I haven't kind of iterated it enough, I want to make sure that I swatch this for you guys because I did buy the wrong shade. By the way, the reason that I had to put a text overlay on that was because I said it in the original intro that I filmed, but I had to refilm the intro because I called it Hydromatic instead of Hydromaniac. I know exactly what the stuff is called, but for whatever reason, reading it off the bottle, I said Hydromatic like in Greece. So I, I have no idea, but you can see like that's a very, very different shade from what I ended up putting on. And so don't buy 10 Ultra Fair if you're expecting to get a shade match like this, because I did have to mix it with some of my deep bronzy drops, but I have made it work on its own as well, just with some like, you know, bronzer and stuff like that. And even in the not quite perfect shade for me, I think that the other one probably, the next deeper one would probably even better. I'm still gonna wear the crap out of this, so. Yeah, it feels good to be back in the saddle on a foundation wear test. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Follow me on Instagram. We are inching ever closer to the magical swipe up. So definitely go and do that if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.